Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in TNO once again, which we're playing as the United Kingdom, of course, under Mr. George Shadow Jellico. And which right now we are doing more equipment for teachers. Uh, let's go on down here. And with the cost of education successfully reduced, we must now increase the quality of said education. An obvious and glaring shortcoming in the education system is a lack of proper equipment that many teachers are facing. We shall have to rectify this mistake, of course. In which we will go ahead and do, not the Education Costs Act, just because we're already doing the Business Act, and I had to get a lot of SLP reformists and hardliners on board. Actually, I did. I, I spent a lot of PP to get all, all everyone on board, just because I want to make sure that we don't have too much, um, well, we definitely need more support, so it is what it is. <clears throat> How we do the fight for healthcare? Many in England believe that we fight for healthcare was lost forever almost two decades ago when the Royal Party took power. We shall revive this idea and move towards a comprehensive healthcare plan. While it may not be perfect, this new system will be a great step forward towards an even greater society. Followed up with better pay for doctors, a minuscule decrease in jobs. Uh oh. The battle for healthcare starts with the most important figures in the field doctor or doctors. We cannot expect to bring healthcare to all if the supply of doctors is so limited. By increasing their pay, we can encourage more individuals to pursue the field of medicine, allowing us to bring better quality healthcare, of course, to all. Cool. And what do we have here? Right now, we, we see I compromised with the SLP earlier on. Actually, we can increase the moderate, increasing their strength. We have enough PP. We might be able to do it at least once. Let's try that. If, just because this. Uh... I know we don't have another election that we can do right now, but I still want to make sure we can do okay, so. Oh, the act passes. There we go. Yeah. Oh. Okay. For businesses, all you get is a civvy and a milli. Wow. That's great. That's real great. Cool. All right. Even though I was, I'm a little disappointed with that. Nothing about businesses, cutting taxes, or increasing revenues, or some, something like that. Let's go ahead and cut everything else down. Just keep cutting it down for now. Totally fine with us. Just cut, 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 cut. We saw the officers, which we'll do later on, like I said before. 11%, 11% moderate power is very high, which we love, love, love. Tokyo standoff is great. And the Education Costs Act. A new act shall be sent through to Parliament. The new Education Costs Act seeks to, as the name makes clear, address the cost of education. While this may cost the government a large sum of money, in the long run, the move should pay off by improving the academic base of our nation and bringing England into a more intelligent future. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I don't want to cut off our PP too much, just because eventually... I did count... The, we got a lot of acts. We got the Education Act. We have the NHS Act. We've got a clean system. No, we've got the Protection of Democracy Act, the Investigation Act. We have the Child, Ch Children and Wives Act, Bro Worker Protection Act. So we got a lot of acts. We do have to keep a good amount of political power, but we can spend a little bit in the meantime. So, all right, military officer is fine. There was one comment uh, saying though, like uh, I did say in the last episode, I might or probably will not decriminalize homosexuality just because someone did say that they haven't seen it yet in a campaign that. So, like the NDL will not, and also I did during the SLP run. However, someone else also said that technically we did decriminalize it when I played as the other two routes with Macmillan and Modeling, and with Thatcher. So technically that's three. So that I was interesting that that was brought up. Now we'll do SLP right now too. We have more than support, but I'm going to do the sides too, just to give us slightly more support as well back. So it's not looking really good. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter to me. I'll be honest, just because. It's, I'm more focused on the economy of, than anything else, so... Hmm... Considering the amount of upvotes that one comment did get, versus the amount of other votes the other group wanted, we'll see. We'll see when we get there. Cool. And it's almost 1970. Almost under decade. Almost. Let's see... 12%. Totally fine. Ah, uh, the Piazza Fonta. A dawn is not just the night that dies, it is a man in his becoming. And the warm blood staining the pavement is a war that is just starting. Ricardo Manarini. Hot Ottomans, goodbye. English society, though. Uh, Jellico, along with the rest of the National Democratic League, wishes to change English society for good. Decades of rule under the tyranny of the German collaborators has left our society a lot worse for wear. Though now how bad things have become will need to be assessed. Once we know how the true breadth of issues that affect our nation, can we begin to improve England? Actually, did Maudling decriminalize homosexuality? I don't even remember. He might have, he might not have. I don't remember. But changing the air. Oh, what is this? Ah. Everyone who read this, please go ahead. I'm pretty sure I've read this before. Yeah, so. Scottish rights? Well, there's better than Scottish resistance. Oh, boy. 
Moderate wing. Eh, do it, why not? Because you can. Because <clears throat> you can. It's still not looking good. Besides, if we don't decriminalize homosexuality right now, we're probably going to lose to the SLP, and they're going to probably decriminalize it, so... That's kind of my way of thinking right now. But the family, the workers, let's do the workers. The working class is one of the basic pillars of our nation. Without them, this country would not exist. Yet the SLP would have them believe that we care nothing for their plight. Regrettably, some of them believe this propaganda. If the NDL is to accomplish anything as a party, we must reach the working class. We must make it clear that we understand their plight and will protect their rights and livelihood. One does not have to be a socialist to be pro-worker. Alright, followed up with what? <clears throat> Oh, some technology, that's what's up. Cool, and happy 1970, everyone. Hope you have a tremendous new decade. Uh, let's see. More than good enough, good enough, good enough. The workers followed up with meet with moderate unionists. Swaying the more moderate unions to support us is our best chance of persuading more workers to approve our government. Many of these unions are opposed to the more radical ideas of the Socialist Labour Party. We'll be, we will be more than welcome to hear them out, for the benefit of the NDL and the unions both. The strength of the Democrats increase and more jobs. <clears throat> all right so okay so academic base that's all that happens it begins to improve that's literally it okay i mean technically we're already 8.75 that's gonna go up probably by the time we end this episode so we go from secondary school into tertiary school which is probably really actually really good but well you know what? that's better than what i thought it was going to be because usually when that happens you change one of these laws over here social laws or yeah probably social laws that basically makes it costs even more. We already have subsidized higher education, but not free education. Not yet. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. But what does it mean, or what does the man on the street think? Of course, I didn't vote for the NDL. And why should I? What has Jellicoe done to deserve my support? Nothing. The NDL is a party of the upper class. <clears throat> Head in the sand, conservatives and people who think a few empty phrases are going to do the same thing as concrete action. They'd rather bring back the monarchy than care about your people like you or me. And all these reforms they promise, what good does it do us in the lower classes? I'll tell you what, not a darn thing and they ain't going to change. But I guess they don't need to care about these people like me after all. They even won, even though I vote SLP, right? But one day, that's not going to be enough for them. And they will get punished because of it. Well, we have to give them something. And the Worker Protections Act. The best way to win the support of the English workers is to make them feel safe. In the Victorian times, workers would often lose limbs, if not their lives, to dangerous machines, as they worked long and brutal hours. In truth, not nearly enough has changed since then. The collaborators cared little for the safety of the English worker as long as the goods flowed. The worker must be protected. New regulations will be enacted to protect their safety on the job, and safety inspectors will be hired and empowered to ensure that these regulations are followed. The English worker will not have to risk their health just to earn their daily bread. Hmm. And we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Um, what about the rich? Yeah, that's too much political power for me to do. We'll, we'll probably do that one. What, maybe close to last. Close to last. Not class. Not last, but close to last. Keeps cutting. Keep cutting. We can cut down that national debt for a while until the, the oil crisis hits. And oh, I'll be saying some bad words in my head. That's all right, though. Even 1.12 every day. Beautiful. The Workers Protection Act. Workers must be protected. To a degree. Up here to the moderate left, which is actually not too bad because we can lower the support um, for all these guys, which I actually might save because we're going to have to continue increasing um, the support or use the SOP support when trying to pass these acts. So let's save that for later and let's do the nation. <clears throat> We must examine all those who we let into the country, whether they flee, are fleeing or have fled Nazi tyranny or simply searching for work. Refugees and immigrants have been at the top of the agenda of the Patriot Party for a while. We shall have to hear Powell and his lot out if we are to maintain their support in the Commons. British. Oh, there goes Order, order, order 44. British parliamentary stuff. Just, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I'm a simple American. They do government stuff. The more government stuff they do... The more government stuff they do. I don't know. Don't ask me. I ain't British. But, hope to go to UK someday. Someday. Alright, alright. 28 day focuses, man. Just that's so long. Uh, I, I don't know. Just after playing so many mods and so many different, uh, you know, campaigns. 28 days actually is not that bad. I'm just complaining. I'm just whining for no reason. It just, I don't know. It feels like it's long because there's, you know, we can watch the world, but it's TNO and it's a story. 
That's so much better than 70 day focuses though. But on refugees and jobs. Many refugees arrived on the shores of England after it liberated itself from the Germans. These people have become a topic of tension within the country. Those within the Patriot Party believe that they are they are taking jobs from the English people who have already suffered the hardships of living under the German boot. However, the liberals believe that they should be accepted. After all, there's nowhere left for them to go. Forcing them to leave would be playing a part in Nazi oppression. A decision will have to be made on the issue before the government becomes further divided. Well, crud. You know what? How about this? Whatever we choose here will affect whatever we do here. The Border Act, forgive me. So, hmm, we'll see. We'll definitely see. Cool. And, thank you. Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot about doing this one. Oh, we don't need... Okay, yeah. Not bad. You know what? Actually, let's go look at the map again. So, this is turning more red. <clears throat> Not good. So, if we do spend 100 PP and do. We can lower our support first. And obviously, we don't need to. That didn't do anything for us. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure, whatever. Whatever. <clears throat> Alright, so the Border Act versus. Or we just do this one. We stand for freedom and dignity. Vetted and. Ooh. You do get more academic base. And, and, ooh, strength of the patriots decrease. And if we go over here, Sexual Offenses Act versus, forgive me. Uh, but same tune, different key. A fishing vessel from the North Sea moves close to the shoreline. It purposely beaches itself on the coast. When some Coast Guard patrolmen arrive to inspect it, they are shocked to find two or three families on board. These men, women, and children request asylum. It's a story straight out of Scotland before the Civil War, when English refugees arrived in scores. But it is not Scotland. It is not 1962. And the people on board are not English. England's reputation as a light of freedom in the darkness of Europe is well deserved, however. It also comes with the new status as the easiest way to get out of a jam in the continent. Every day, more and more of the oppressed masses on the continent arrive looking for a new life in the free nation. Freed slaves, political opponents, and people looking to get away from the fighting come here. This issue cannot go unaddressed. The government has to make an official policy on the large amounts of refugees coming here. Let's solve the issue. Um. Hmm. The Border Act. I like that you do get more academic base and industrial expertise. I like that a lot. It doesn't seem like... I don't know. Can you get anything else from here? Because you get strength of patriots increase. Do you get any other benefits? I mean, obviously... Uh, actually, hold on. The liberals need at least 30% influence. Act isn't being handled in Congress. That's true. Um, how much? Oh, they need thirty percent. Oh, I don't, oh, I've been suppressing both groups so hard. I don't think. Could we even hold on? Uh, I don't know. I'm feeling like we'll do forgive me, Stevis, and we stand for freedom and dignity. I think we'll do those two, just because the person who said it first. I usually try to get whoever had the most votes for decisions in the campaign. Uh. Hmm. What's the next act we could do? NHS act, technically. Uh, it's gonna cost so much. I don't do that yet. The family. Few will contest the fact that the family is a cornerstone of English society and culture, but after the destruction of the British Empire, 20 years of collaboration with Germany in the Civil War, few can agree on what the modern English family even is. People like Enoch Powell call for a return to the traditional family unit of working husband and homemaker wife, with many women having served or provided support for their existence, and even seeing common socialist militias returning to such a tradition seems unlikely and for many English men and women. At the same time, we aren't the SLP. Traditions must be preserved, but they also may need to adapt to our new world. Uh, we got about less than three weeks. That's good. I wonder what protections we do give them. Do we give them, like, more minimum wage? <laughs> Is that all? Generous subsidies. That's really for unemployment, really. Trinket unemployment. Huh. We'll see. Well, we'll see very soon. Moderate power is 75%, and that's all we care about. Uh, is there any way? We can't really improve this at all. Electoral map's looking not very good. Not very good. Nope. Nope. Not very good. Cool. Still cutting it down. Not bad. Not bad. All right. And the family. It's a family affair. Wash ashore. Thousands upon thousands of people are entering England every single day. Refugees from the Baltics are being driven by mass violence and instability from their homelands to the coasts of England. And they're a hot-button issue for uh, everyone in Parliament. 
The Patriots must say they, they have to return to Europe. The Whigs say they cannot go back without experiencing retaliation from tyrannical governments. It falls on the Democrats to decide. Should we allow England to be a refuge for all freedom-seeking men and women on the continent? Or can we not afford any political repercussions from the Patriots right now? They have to say... Uh... No matter what decision I make, it's going to disappoint people. But realistically, 1970, we're going to lose the election. SLP will decriminalize homosexuality. Like, that's what Harold Wilson did in real life. In the 70s, I think, too. So, they just have to wait a little longer. I think we're going to go with the stand for freedom and dignity. Yeah, the border act would be kind of cool to do. But if you want to do about that, please go right ahead. So, um, of course they have to say. So, yeah. Apologies if you didn't like that one. I can't please everybody. So, so I think next we're going to beeline for... Actually, no. Since we're not doing the act there, and we're not doing the act... We're not doing either act. Oh. Yeah, so that's... Okay. Okay, so when's the next act? Because I do want to focus on the acts more and more. So we'll do the children and wise acts. The oh, and what passes? Okay, so limited safety regulations. Ah, safety regulations. I forgot about that. Acceptable safety regulations. Less production efficiency cap. More monthly population and support. Increases. Great. Tradition and modernity. The issue of tradition and its use in the modern world is a frequent issue in the House of Commons. Further discussion will have to take place to make sure all sides of our party can support the careful balance we will have to make sure between the two in the future. Fortunately for us, though, Parliament loves to debate such things. I'm sure they'd love to debate it. It makes them really look good in the media. That they say they're really fighting for the, you know, their, their supporters' cause. Totally, totally believing in everything they want. Uh, let's see, we need more tanks. Anything else here? No, we're looking really good. Even carrier cast is going okay. Tactical bombers, we don't believe in such trifle things. Trifle things. It's a family affair. Things have changed since the old days. It used to be that many people would be married as soon as they would turn 18. Now, people say I'm married into their 20s. People would say only together for a short time before committing to staying together. Now, couples stay together and sin for years. Oh, relationships were for life in the old days. Now, there's significant pressure for new, no-fault divorce laws. And couples are using contraception to have... Uh, uh, relations with no consequences. It's clear that the English family has changed. We simply could bemoan these changes and argue that a national sickness has overtaken the family structure of England, or really the United Kingdom, while we try to pretend we're in the past. Or we could accept these things as act and try to work with them to handle the unique problems and needs they pose. For the times we have, for the times have changed, and we must change as well. Seventy-six percent, nine percent. Oh well. Well, I mean, we'll boost the the conservative side up a little bit, you know, later on. So, forgive me, Mr. Stevens. Forgive me. But you got to think about the political ramifications. What can we get done now that we can't delay the inevitable? Oh, and the oil crisis. Well, crap. Do you even have focuses to deal with that? I don't remember. I think we did everything here, right? And there goes. Oh, oh yeah, I think yeah. Okay. And there we go. Now it goes. Ah, ah, so bad. Ah. Uh, do we have anything for the oil crisis? That's all the military stuff over here. Frankfurt stock market crash amidst oil crisis. Will the thousand-year Reich finally crumble under the weight of oil? Children and wives, though. Current laws regarding the protection of wives and children, especially widows and orphans, has been found to be lacking in several areas. These laws will have to be updated in order to assure that the most vulnerable people in our society are specifically protected. Oh, now we don't get a lot of political power. A debate in Parliament. The Honorable Gentleman, says the Whig MP, with all due respect, is extremely in misinformed and stuck in his ways. The family of today must contend with the fact that outdated traditions and misogynist practices are also on the way out. Things are changing, and it's for the better. The Honorable Lady, says the Patriot MP, with all due respect, is proposing a terrifying and disastrous familiar doctrine. If we were to follow her, the number of children born out of wedlock would drastically increase, and depravity or depravity would spread throughout the land. Traditional values must guide the families of today. This has been going on for far too long, and we must have been. Who's right? Uh, well, technically, like, our support is 9%, so technically we probably need to go down this way, but how much support do we get? Because I do want to keep doing this one. I do want more jobs, so. Sorry. Jobs. And, yeah, as much. I didn't even realize we need 30% influence. My bad. My fault, guys. That's totally my fault. So, if, I'm pretty sure England someday, UK, England, is going to get reworked. So, when we get back here again in the future, I'll probably go the other route, if you remind me. If you can totally remind me that I went with not decriminalizing homosexuality in my NDL run, and I'd play England again when they get reworked someday, probably. Please remind me. Please. But, forgive me, Mr. John St. Stevens. 
Unfortunately, the Sexual Offenses Act has failed to attract sufficient support within our party for us to have any hope of passing it through the Commons. The idea of reforming laws on homosexuality within our country will have to be delayed for now. The Patriots have been quick to celebrate the defeat of this bill before it was even introduced. However, behind the scenes, St. John Stevens has become a broken man. The league who supported him from the start has finally failed him. I mean, it's, it's inevitable, probably. So, I mean, it's going to get passed eventually. Maybe not now, but it, well, if SLP gets in power. And they will, probably, after this. They definitely will. Sorry, John. It isn't for this time for now. But, ooh, a new society. The groundwork laid. The cracks in our system. Despite what we like to believe, our system of civil cracks that have undermined the nation for too long. Many fear that there are people who exist within even our most secretive institutions who work only to undermine the government. These issues are going to be incredibly difficult to fix, but we have to try. We will have to try. For the good of our nation depends on it. Oh, do we have something else here? Oh, we're passing an act. Oh, we could probably just do moderate wing? Yeah, moderate wing. Sorry, conservatives, but jobs matter. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's looking not too bad. Uh, and we look over here, nothing really changed, so. Harold Wilson's definitely going to make, be making a comeback. Actually, are we still importing fuel? Yeah, we don't believe in that. Wow, we have 59. 53. I wish I could read. Huh. Let's make more factories for now, though. Oh, my goodness. I hate the oil crosses so much. Actually, what is Spear up to? The West Cowers. Oh, he's on this one. Oh, which, ooh, we get to see which way he goes. Hey, if you want to be a decrease in poverty, please go right ahead. A toast for economists. Nice. 35% more income rate factor, plus 55% more taxable population factor. Nice. We love taxing the populace unless it's in real life. In real life, no thank you. Um, yeah, this one. So do we have any other acts this way before we get to the bottom? Ooh, Tales of Corruption, that's not good. Oh, oh, that's not good. House, uh, do we need, oh goodness. We need all this stuff. Holy crud. Alright, so if that's going to be the case, I think I might just want to finish this stuff out first. I do want to do the NHS, but we stand for freedom and dignity. Though fascism's dark shadow still looms over Europe, its grip on a hundred peoples from Paris to Warsaw nigh absolute, England's liberty-loving torch shines in defiance yet again. It is thus only natural for many who escape the Reich's fell clutches to seek refuge and better lives behind our shores. Powell and his lock and moan about rivers of blood. Uh, all they like, but, river, but England shall not bow to the small-minded thinking their so-called borders act... Uh, typifies. Her borders will remain open to all who yearn for freedom and democracy for as long as we live. We lose some political power, but we'll get some more a social, uh, you know. Society development rate. My apologies. But I, mentally, I, I'm i not here right now, apparently. I'm just not here at all. Like, my apologies. Holy crud. My mind is just not working right now. Man, my head is, where is it going? Yeah. Oh, and there it goes. Actually, we send but artists victory in Iraq. I'm wondering if we send volunteers. We're gonna send them to uh, Iran when everything falls apart. Sorry, Mohammed Reza Pahlavi, you're probably gonna die. Just saying. Yeah, do that one. Even though we do need to keep an eye on our people, like I said before, but we'll see. All right. Improve legal immigration, lose some stability, appear with moderate left. I want to wait for that one. Hey, if you want to be able to improve academic base, please go right ahead. So, that is something to be celebrated. Oh, the pass act passes. Gender equality. So, we get more output and recruitable population factor. We lose monthly population and stability. The strength of the Whigs increase. Cool. Improve legal immigration. What about the rich NHS Act? You know what? We're spending so much money anyways to the NHS Act. We should now attempt to pass a new act through Parliament. The National Healthcare Service Act. While this may not be a popular act to many in Parliament, with the Patriots denouncing the act as treasonous and with the Socialists decrying the act is not going far enough, the majority of the people of England will support us. It should provide a more affordable and accessible service to those in the middle and lower classes, as is our goals. Wait. Ooh. With that poverty reduction. Oh, no! Oh no! We actually still have a deficit! With the oil crisis! Oh no! <laughs> oh well. Uh, I don't want to spend the PP for now. I and mean, this is still okay. So 11 to 17% is fine. Oh, oh, I want more time to cut it down though. Ah. Uh... Improve legal immigration first. In spite of the many points of contention, the issue of immigration is brought up between the different wings of our government. There is general consensus that more legal immigration will be better for the nation. Therefore, we shall work to improve our current system to attract more foreigners to enter the country through legal means. 
Oops. <sighs> oh, it got even worse now. How did it get worse? You know what? I don't think... think uh, actually, um, you know what? I'm going to do something radical. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do. Goodbye, guys. Thank you. Even though you don't even cost us that much. I mean, you really guys... These <laughs> really don't. <laughs> uh, why do you bane me with the lack of money and fuel? Actually, we have more than enough fuel. Why would we have an oil crisis with so much fuel? If anything, that should really affect your fuel gain. Just because, you know, an oil crisis, it doesn't make sense. I mean, if we have like 53 oil and we get one, we get how much every day? 230? It's not much, but still. Fear of error loss. Oh, is he going dang? Is he going dang his route? Whoa. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Albert Speer, whoa. <laughs> I was expecting him to go full, like, full fascist route, but okay, yeah. And. Screw it. We're gonna go Tales of Corruption to get through this as fast as possible. We have I, we have a deficit, man. I don't want to hurt the deficit until later. Recently, the media has claimed that corruption is rampant throughout Parliament, particularly within the National Democratic League. Such accusations are deeply harmful to the government's reputation, but they will have to be investigated if we are to redeem ourselves in the eyes of the public. A change in later. If you want to read that, please go ahead. Scottish threats are changing with Scottish protests. They're always gonna be protesting. Always gonna be. Wow. An actual AI. Like, I didn't even manipulate this at all. Like, I didn't, like, go in and help them out during the Civil War or anything like that. Just, I don't think, when's the last time I actually saw Albert Speer go down Dangus route? Dang Speer. That dang Speer, man. That danger. God danger. The problems with great generals. Um, I've read this one before, I'm pretty sure, so. Yeah, please go ahead if you would like to do this one. So, it is what it is. And boom. Cool. Tales of Corruption. And the root of the problem. Over time, we realize that the root of many of our issues with corruption stems from big businesses, especially those who have established some strong links within the party. These wealthy CEOs serve only their own greedy interests and ruin our democracy in the process. They will have to be combated in Parliament. We need to show them that we are not afraid to stand up for democracy. Which we, we must be lose a lot of political power here, but the Prime Minister's most secret. Uh, most of what crossed the desk of George Jellico was mundane, widely known, and only required his oversight as a formality, but the folder on his desk was much more than that. It was a file prepared in secrecy and delivered to him as a top priority. And so it was a report about the NDL. Things were going well on the surface. Everyone seemed to be acting honestly and in the public interest, but there were rumors of deals that weren't in the normal scope of business. Deals made off of records whose recipients got way more in return. Deals that stunk with corruption. An MP redirecting aid to his own district. A clerk who approved a loan to a phone company living beyond his means. Reports of supplies laying around and men collecting papers check for doing nothing at work sites. A million here, a million there. Pretty soon it all added up to real money. Jellicoe put the file in his safe along with other items of utmost importance and secrecy. He would make some calls and deal with this problem quietly. Word getting out would be ruinous to the NDL and would endanger his government, but not doing anything would be worse. Silence is a must. Prejudice is a plus. Oh. Oh, daily social conservative support goes down. Was he corrupt at all? Like, like I don't know like that much about English or British politics. Like, Was George Jellicoe that corrupt in real life? I have no idea. Quick investigations, I guess, though. We would have liked to have delved deeper into solving the possible corruption within the National Democratic League, but we do not have the time for a full investigation. Smaller and quicker inspections will be made in order to check some of the more dubious members of Parliament. It may not be the most effective process, but we will surely catch something. And right now, we are doing clear our name. The National Democratic League's notorious corruption is not a reputation we would like to maintain. Our recent work to remove all unwanted interference in our democracy should have been enough to stop these allegations. No matter, though, we will just have to renew our efforts to convince the people of this fact there is no corruption in the NDL and the Investigation Act. <clears throat> the current system forces the government to consult the Commons before it can begin investigation into Parliament. This has been found to greatly limit our ability to combat corruption and the influence of the companies over MPs. A new law will be passed in order to remove this unnecessary delay. Once the Investigation Act is passed, any inquiries into Parliament will be started as a direct order from the government. Alright, and then... <clears throat> And then, appeal to the moderate left. We could do that. Eh, I do want to do that one, though. Strength of Democrats does increase. We get more political power, too, which would be nice. The groundwork lay would be very nice as well. Um, hmm. The radicals. I, I would like to get some more stuff done before then. A clean system. How good is that? Eh, it's okay. It's not great. We don't have enough stability anyways. Let's do the radicals. The English people have had, had made clear their rejection of socialism and fascism in the post-war elections. Nevertheless, adherents of both still lurk within the populace, biding their time until another opportune moment. My apologies about this. We got to check that one too. Oh, and... Oh, wow, there's some serious lag. Holy crap. Ah, 
keep it on. We will do well to remind ourselves and our people that fascists dismantled the old empire and forced their vassalage to Germany for decades. The socialists are hardly better. They, too, wish to uproot centuries of tradition and restrict democracy to the like-minded in the name of rapid and unsustainable progress rather than brutish strongmen. Both must be fought whether in parliament or in the shadows. The results shall find no quarter from us. Uh... Uprooting centuries of tradition. Well, we're doing that slowly anyways, so I mean, I'm not sure what what they're really getting at here <laughs> Um, 209. Yeah, I'll go do some. Yeah Do them too. There you go. Yep. We're definitely gonna lose the elections here. Look at that. So bad Of course, if we actually campaign, you know, the TNO style of campaigning, we might do okay, maybe, but still. Hey, minus 2 billion. Not bad. And we're still building some more cities too, so. Actually, Iran? Darn, we can't send volunteers. Well, hopefully America does. Iranian Civil War? Cool. After the Radicals, far left. Oh, well, I guess we'll do some military doctrine then. Thank you. We're all done with them. Nice. Thank you very much. Come again. The far left. Who is Butch hiding? Look into the organizations. Uh, let's do the far right first. While we may have our disagreements with the leftists and the Socialist Labour Party, they did fight beside us during the Civil War. The blood we all shed to a birth of free England forges bonds stronger than brothers. That much, at least, we recognize. The same cannot be said to the far right, while most of them are either dead, in prison, or in exile. Some stray elements remain unnoticed during or among the masses, for England to remain free. The organizations they have since formed must be rooted out and dealt with. Cool. So, that, yeah. These two acts are going to do this in campaign, but maybe next time. I could have done that one, and then that one, but... Next time. Next time. The far right. Look into white organizations. There are numerous defense leagues that claim to protect the purity of the English race. These claims are obviously nonsense. It is obvious to every sane man and woman in, in England that these so-called defenders of the white race are nothing more than Nazis. These fiends must be brought, uh, fought tooth and nail. Disturbing rise in Germany. Effective unification? Great. The Welsh are dying down, as they should be. Eh, <laughs> conservative power is really low. Um, I, I want to spend political power for more jobs, but we just can't do it right now. We just cannot. It doesn't feel right, currently, though, that we are able to cut down our debt using our, you know, deficit during the oil crisis. It, it just doesn't feel right to me. I don't know. It just, it doesn't make sense to me if we actually have an oil crisis. Now, if the economy is still going great, we're still cutting deficits, you know. I mean, I guess it makes some sense, but wow, that is a sad Pakistan. Holy crap. That is sad. Dude, like, India and Pakistan cannot have a rivalry in this timeline if Pakistan looks like this. They don't have Karachi. Jesus Christ. Afghanistan. Oh, look at you. Mohammed Zahir. Shah. What's well, going to cool? The Graveyard Empires. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're... Oh. No wonder they won. They, they're in the sphere. The black shirt crosses your path. The crackdown on the right asks Palestine. Are you daft? The Prime Minister asked for an answer to the problem, said the head of MI5. And unfortunately, this is the best one. The far right is growing in a country. They've wormed their way into our armed forces and they must be rooted out if we are to avoid any unpleasant events. You cannot think that the entire fate of the nation is threatened by some fascists in the reserves, can you? Asked Powell. The director is right, Home Secretary said Jellico. You know as much as I do, these wide organizations are a bloody menace and we have to take them out. Powell shook his head. I don't like it, George, and I don't like it, and this is going to bite you in the butt. We must move fast, then. Find the splinters. One would think that those aligned with the Nazis would have been driven out of the military during the Civil War, either being killed in action or imprisoned after the fighting stopped, regretfully. It seems that, that this is not the case. Many of the white... Uh, organizations are we investigating are su suspected to have ties to the Royal Army. They may have been using the armies for the recruiting grounds, or even worse, smuggling weapons through the causes. This cannot be allowed to continue. These connections must be sought out and severed quickly. Hey, English is just written. Um, yeah, I guess it makes sense. We get more support everywhere. Just don't question what kind of tactics we're using and stuff like that. Don't question. And we're done with building civvies. Big sadness hours, my friends. Big, big sadness hours. Anything else? It's all green. Or not blue. Duh. My eyes, like I said earlier. My goodness. Uh, 24 to 25? Okay. I mean, I could convert military factories to civvy factories, but we're already kind of stretched pretty thin for millies as is, so. We don't want to totally disarm ourselves. Yeah, we've got 22 military factories and 235 civilian factories in use. Jesus. That is... That's a bit nuts. So. Actually, what is high command like? We did raise... Uh, some of the stuff here. Yeah. Very... 100% loyal. And 95%, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. Awesome, awesome. Cool, cool, cool. And I don't think we're missing our tanks. Nice. Heat integration, not bad. Light exterior development. And find the splinters. 
Oh, Slaver Bolt in the Reich. Oh, the time for choosing is at hand. I do want to get down to the Protection of Democracy Act pretty quickly if we can, though, so. Cool. The Slaver Bolt. The Freedom Beckons. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Um, and then we'll do the far left. Or we're going to appeal to the moderate left. We'll get that one first. But I want to get the act done as fast as possible. The far left. Whatever disagreements we may have had with like men like Bill Alexander and the Social Slaver Party, we know they're not enemies of England. They fought and bled for this country like anyone else, but there are elements within the organizations that cannot be trusted that even now are a threat to both the Crown and English democracy. These elements seek to transform England into a vision of Bukharin's Soviet Union. And unlike those on the far right, these men do not lurk in the shadows, for some are even active members of Parliament. For England's safety, we must investigate these hardliners. Ah, yes, hardliners. We love the hardliners. They make us look better. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh what? Oh, the Reichsland Balticum. Oh, Speer. Energy Sicherungsgesetz. Oh, the sword has fallen. I remember doing this stuff like three times. I wonder, is he going to just go to war with them? Or... What's going to happen? What is going to happen, the Gang of Forge Bear? Will he be... They should be able to beat Ruslan, right? They should be able to. Right? I mean, Iran's being itself, but, you know, it's pretty normal. Poor Iran. I'd love to have a new Iranian focus tree for them. I'd love to see that someday. Alright, the far left. Because we still have all the military side to do as well. But what is... What is Birch hiding? Some of the greatest threats to the future of England's democracy look within the radical wings of the Socialist Labour Party. We shall have to work hard to discover all of its hidden ties and secrets, especially those of the known communist Reginald Birch. The man is clearly a danger to the safety of the nation. He will have to be brought into the light. Nice. Really good APCs, even though we're literally not even using them. I'm just trying to cut this down as much as we can because this thing is going to balloon up like crazy later on. Oh, wait, who's winning here? Siberian Free Territory versus Zukov. No ma- Uh-oh. 109 divisions. Oh, it's anyone's game. I'm going to say that these guys could still have, still have a very good chance of winning because they did patch, uh, they, uh, push past the heroes. Uh. Oh man, this is... Oh, they did they did snake their way into here though. <clears throat> no manpower is no bueno in waging wars, so... Red flag in the morning. It's obviously extremely concerning, said the head of MI5. The far left has been on the upswing since the Civil War. There's a decent segment of the SLP that's promoting these fellows, and it's quite worrying. I'm not even sure Wilson can control what's going on. Oh, but he probably can. The war cabinet was concerned. And what can we do about this situation, asked Jellico. Well, sir, I think the best solution is to start making moves to infiltrate the communists. If I know what they're doing and who the members are, then we start arresting those who have done criminal activities. Steve shook his head. Philby's going to hit the roof when he hears about this. It's unfortunate, but it has to be done. Said Jellico. Now let's start breaking these organizations up before they do something rash. Point to a red object. <clears throat> the issue of Philby. Philby has been oddly obstructive towards our attempts to address the hidden issues within our government. This is, of course, a great concern to all those interested in keeping our nation secure. Yet the question remains, should we take action against him? Going against his wishes could put the government at greater risk. It may be better for all of us to keep him out of the way and in the shadows where he belongs. Um, did we already dress him, sort of, already? Like, the, the top of the thing here, cutting their guns, is for the queen. We, we already cut them down a little bit. They'll be pacified. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and that goes part of Iran. Yay! And there's still be more uh, ports, just in case. You never know. Cool. Oh, Germany, what are you up to right now? The plan going forward, huh? Back to the drawing board? Oh, God. The, f the fate of Europe is... Oh, I don't know. The Siberian Free Territory. A bunch of anarchists are winning the war, it looks like, right now. Oh, boy. The issue fill me. And there goes part of Iran. The Protection of Democracy Act. Democracy must be preserved at all costs. German occupation nearly wiped out our democratic traditions forever, reducing Parliament to little more than a rubber stamp. There are certain elements in our society that are incompatible with our de democratic system. Fascists and the far left only use democracy to assert their own power, then subvert democracy itself. Fascists and hardline socialists alike must be removed from the political sphere to ensure their corrupted words are never to be heard in Parliament. Then again, is that against free press? Hmm. Questions, questions, questions. Good, good, good. Oh, I think this is going to be wild. You got, hopefully, well, not getting it for Speer, but, you know, dang it, Speer versus a bunch of anarchists in Russia. That is going to be kind of wild. 
I kind of wish... You know what does AI do if we have the uh, second West Russian War mod? Because I don't have it installed for this campaign, unfortunately. But that'd be really cool. Just to see, like, Gang of Four... Uh, not Gang of Four Spear. Dang of Spear. A fight off these guys. Oh. An afternoon with Director Philby. Jellico knew who it was before he opened the door. Only one man would be arriving at his office this Af this fast after he started the investigations in the far left. What can I do for you today, Director? He asked, trying to be putting on a s friendly face for now. Philby was not calmed by this formality. Just what the heck do you think you're trying to do pull here, Prime Minister? He yelled, sending MI5 to break up and harass the left. Are you insane? Well, no, Director, said Jellico. Stop trying to keep still a calm tone. MI5 has expressed concern with a bunch of authoritarian Bukharanists running around, having dreams of seizing power and going full Jacobin, but... That's entirely not your line of work, so you have no reason to be concerned unless you're friendly with Birch. You effin' stuck-up aristocrat. You want to persecute half the people in MI6 because you want to hurt the opposition. You you keep doing that, and everything at my organization is going to go downhill. We're not going to have the MI5 poke around our offices and tell us F off, said Jellico. Now we're angry. You do whatever the F MI5 tells you to do. You live in England. MI5 can look at you. Those are the rules, Director. And what the F are so many of your friends doing in the state security apparatus? I've said the F word almost so many times. So close. Listen, Prime Minister, you keep this up and MI6 is going to grind to a halt. You can either keep up your crusade of yours or you can stop go now and everything can go back to normal. So what is it? Is MI6 going to stop work or not? Truth be told, Jellico wasn't expecting this. But in a moment, he looked Philby in the face and told him his answer. I don't effing care. Do you expect me to say that? You win, but one day your booty will hang from my fireplace. Anti-communist action. What is that? Philby pacified. They said they'll return House of the Lords. Um... Scottish protests. Welsh unrest. Modify anti... Do we have anti-communist action? Scottish protests. Oil crisis. House of Lords. Uh, uh, uh. Um. Does this one give you anti-communist action? Um. You will win, but... I mean, what's the point of backing down now that we're going, since we're going that way anyway, so... Uh, okay. How about a clean system, though? Okay, there's no description there, okay. Well, we'll do that later on, maybe when we're done, and we'll be reading a lot of the military focuses, so... Uh, appeal to the moderate left. The time has come for us to make a move and take advantage of the disaffection of the moderate left wing within the SLP. By showing interest in some of the policies upheld by the old Labour Party, we could easily attract a large proportion of these voters to our side. The problems with this are sizable. Our coalition is already incredibly broad, and the right-wing members of our government will be outraged by this move. However, this may be necessary to ensure that the majority of people support our government. <clears throat> cool. 58 billion, and it's going to only go up from here. I'm really interested in seeing what they're doing. Volga, of course. Oh, we have Deutsches Freikorps killing each other off. Yeah, it looks like the anarchists are going to win. Wow. They usually don't win my campaigns. Alright, so... Um, social slavery party, we have to do them anyways. Eh, there you go. More Democrats. Actually, we'll do the conservative wing too, because we can. Because we have more than enough PP for this one. Skills of democracy just because it is an L7, which sucks. Promotes tax cuts. Wigs. That'd be kind of cool to do. Democrats. Patriots. Does this jump up to 78%? It does. Good. Minus 2.4 billion. Not bad. And now it's looking even more red. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, low noise amplification. Advanced anti-air. Very good, very good. And after that, we'll go ahead and do uh, a new society. With our last of our reforms finished, we can finally end our efforts of transforming our society. Some of the changes we have implemented have certainly exposed some of the more deep-rooted issues hidden within our party, but at least we've made an effort. Come what may, our society has been changed for the foreseeable future, though whether these changes have been for the better or worse is yet to be found out. Yeah, once DNO2 is here, like, someday. Um, it'd be interesting, actually, because, like, regardless of which way you go, you'll probably end up going to the other way. If, so, since we started off with the NDL, if TNO2 would come out, we'll probably go with the SLP. If we start with the SLP in the 60s, we'll probably go with the NDL in the next generation or the next decade. Who knows, maybe they'll even throw in a new party if things get really bad. Because people will be fed up with either one of the two parties, so that'll be really cool. So, you never know, but... Yeah, you never know. It'll be really cool. We'll see what happens. If it ever comes out. But, since that one's going to be done, we'll do a clean system eventually. Oh, I don't want to do that one. I really don't want to do any more political power. 0.57 is not really good. 
But we really have no more use of political power for a while. We do get more money, though. Ah, what about the rich? We must also decide what we're going to do about income and wealth inequality with regard to the rich members of society. The SOP would, like, would have us be rid of them completely, taxing their wealth to extortionate levels. The royal party would have us bow down to them and give them free reign to exploit the poor and the hoard their wealth. We'll go for a more sensible middle route. And my goodness, the Siberian Black Army's in it. Cool. Wow. I was not expecting that at all, this campaign. Cool. Alright. Back to America. And there you go. 82% is nice. And what about the rich? What about the rich? Alright. That's good. That's good, good, good. Oh, and we'll do this one too. Cool. Thank you. Followed up with what? A clean system. Act pass is great. English history is written. Okay, so support the disenfranchised. We lose political power. But we also get that political power back. Vetted entry. Okay, so wait. Wait. The act passes. The protection of democracy. So we want vetted entry with skilled refugees only. Didn't... Wait. Did we start off... Go wait. Did this one... We went to vetted entry because of that. Now we're taking it back. Are we? What? Open refugee versus... Um... So that was a waste then. We should have just done the Border Act and the Sexual Offenses Act then. God dang it. <laughs> We're flip-flopping here in the government. Well, which way we want immigration? What the heck? What the heck? Yeah, we'll do the NHS Act. We should now attempt to pass a new act through the Parliament. The NHS Act. Oh boy. Uh, I've already read this one, but while this may not be a popular act to many in Parliament, with the patriots denouncing the act as treasonous and the socialists saying it's not going far enough, the majority of the people of England will support us. It should provide a more affordable and accessible service to those in the middle and lower classes, as, our, as is our goal. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, look. Oh, these guys are fighting these guys. Actually, are you in... Oh, oh! Oh, but Italy joined the OFN. That's a really strong Balkan OFN, then. Well, of course, without Dynamite's back. Oh, the slaves are dying. Ah, oh, Billy Brandt. Why are they killing each other? What? Wait, why are they killing each other? I mean, it makes sense, but still. Minus 3.6 billion is really nice. 3.16 billion. The groundwork laid. We have done it, the impossible, Herculean task of successfully rebuilding the economy and reforming society, but... We are not finished yet. There still remains much work to be done if we want to fulfill the promise of our ideals. But we can truthfully say that we've made England a better place. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Maybe. This is so weird. How much manpower? You guys have probably have a lot of manpower. Like a lot of divisions. These guys have 6 to 10. No wonder you're losing. You have no manpower, power, but you have a lot. But, Jesus. Nice. Jesus Christ. You know what? You rose up in slave, as slaves to revolt against Speer, but it was a military bezek Rusland that put you out to pasture. Alright, and the National Health Care Act. I'm sure the SLP wants this one, right? Um, If we do these three, we might not get enough support really to do it. We might, maybe? Oh, we can, yeah. Actually, I should have done the other wing, but whatever. Conservative power is only 4%. Wow, that's really bad. Uh, strength of the military. Oh, what is efficiency? Mildly increase. Loyalty. Uh, Wigs. Anything else here? Balanced political situation. Well, I don't, I'm, it's really not balanced. Conservatives have been kind of screwed over. So. Well, they did not. They fought until the last man. Quite literally over there. Remember the Civil War, Democrats, decreased immigration quotas. Slave revolt was crushed. Well then. 5%. A very bright light at the end. The fishermen of uh, Watchet have new nests to fish with. Ooh, that sounds very good. 
Uh, in Birmingham, customers crowd the new shopping center next to Alkenluck House, and the homeless in Middlesbrough have now homes that replace the bombed-out shelves that were once common in the town. Things are undeniably better for the common person. A New England has emerged. The standard for life of uh, for life is not just to have enough to live every day. It is to have a home, car, and an American TV on top of that. Living up to that is a growing middle class that buys tons of English products and keeps the tourist industry busy on holidays, and they know that life is good and aren't taking it for granted. The NDL made the reforms that brought this prosperity, and the people give them credit. England is improving every day because of Jellico and his friends. The long depression that had begun in the 20s is gone, and a base has been set for more economic and social reforms, which the English now eagerly wait, and will give them what they want. The land of hope and glory. After a great deal of effort, the National Democratic League has finally created a Britain which is united, democratic, and strong. Our land has endured the agony of Nazi oppression and has, in spite of all this, emerged all the stronger. However, there are still issues that plague the government and foreign nations still threaten our isle. Still, while the country may not be perfect, it is free. Oh, Jerusalem. Strength of the Democrats goes up. I mean, how much more support we can get? We're already over 80%, so. So, how is this going to fold then? Uh, Tis? Tis? Saul Niuk, or how do you say his name? Poland is still here. Barowski. Oh boy. So what's going to happen, guys? What's going to happen? Oh. Well. He is. Yeah. Did he go full? Thing is, he doesn't have a focus suite yet, though. I guess we have to wait to see what happens. I think they still have to do the negotiations. This is weird, man. And I want to see what, what happens with the act. 57 billion, that's not bad. A clean system. And the land of hope and glory. Followed up with a lot of this stuff. The issue of conscription, meeting the sterling. I think I read this one too, so if you want to read this one again, please go ahead. Um, I'm going to read through a lot of these. The issue of conscription. When we fight against the collaborators, we needed every able bodied man to fight for freedom. As such, we had to enact conscription. And thousands of brave young Englishmen died in the name of the legitimate queen. We shall never forget their sacrifice. With peace returned to the country and reconstruction underway, with many of the civilian government asked for conscription to be lifted and for our army to return to a purely volunteer force. A conscripted force, they say, will be far less effective than a professional one and much more costly. On the other hand, there's some in the high command arguing for conscription to remain. Our enemies, especially the Reich, are still very much alive, and having a large army will surely act as a deterrent. As the legitimate Queen's government, it falls upon us to address the matter. Public health care, universal health care, cost goes up, but not by an extreme amount. You still get slightly more political power, which is nice. Um, so, not bad. Not bad. Alright, trucks? No. Uh, this one? Yes, they've got special forces. Oh, where are we at? Oh, it's, we still have a deficit. Good. I wonder how ineffective, the, or how effective or ineffective the NHS will be in the very beginning stages with the NDL. But then again, I'm an American. That's all. That's my defense. The Royal Air Force. Once the undisputed ruler of the skies, the Royal Air Force is all but a shadow of its former glory. The harsh conditions imposed by the peace treaty and 20 years of neglect and an economic downturn have transformed the Air Force into a comatose patient. Even now, all we have is some old birds left by the collaborators and whatever our friends in Canada and the U.S. could spare for us. If we are to reestablish a fully oh, functional um, Air Force, oh, we'll have to rebuild everything from scratch. My apologies. Jerusalem, years ago. While England lay under the jackboot of the Nazis, and millions toiled in slavery and poverty, there were a few with a dream of a, and goal. To rid themselves of the German and the collaborator lackeys, to restore the England of old under her proper monarch, but to not make the same mistakes as England had, they wanted to modernize England and prepare it for a new era. Many did not believe in it, and many fought against it. There were many who had given their lives for such a dream, and many who believed it would never come to fruition. But if those who had died at the hands of the collaborators could look down from heaven, they would scarcely be able to believe how their dreams had come true. That England had rid herself of the tyranny of the Nazis, and the heir of George VI was now in Buckingham Palace, and that England had regained a semblance of her former self, both economically and territorially. They would be beaming as they saw the busy people of, England, of London, filled with optimism and hope for a new tomorrow. Jellicoe reflected on this as he looked out the window. By any measure, he had been a success. The party was still together for now, and Britain was on what now he dreamed of it would be in the back of the old days of the 50s. But darn did it get him on his nerves. All the crap he had to deal with, that nearly made him crack several times. Maybe now that the job was done, he could consider giving up the job and going to a home out in the country somewhere, maybe? Someday, but not now. He saw it to save the moment. Long live Britain and God save the Queen. And we are invited to the OFN Economic Summit. Oh, with Goldwater. I've never read this one. Every member of the OFN has been invited to send a delegation to Vancouver, Canada for the first ever OFN Economic Summit. American President Barry Goldwater himself will be traveling to the Great White North to meet with officials, ministers, and business leaders of America's allies. After all, this whole thing was his idea. A way to try to bring the alliance closer together, officially. It's been stated that the goal of the summit is to encourage more trade between the members of the OFN in a spirit of freedom and democracy. 
However, the US president has not been quiet about his desire to forge free trade deals in more open markets, which some of the smaller nations are hesitant, if not downright hostile to. After all, nations like Australia and South Africa, with smaller economies and businesses, would have to face off American behemoths like Ford, Standard Oil, and Boeing. With vast resources, skills, and labors, the US conglomerates could quickly monopolize these new markets, undercutting the competition and driving the smaller local companies out of business altogether, but at the same time, the thought of an Australian holding cars or Canadian Avro planes being sold into one of the larger markets in the world, with little in the way of tariffs, is also deeply appealing. So, we have to make the decision to go or not. While increasing trade between the members of the OFM would be good, we also need to be concerned about the alliance shifting away from the main goal of protecting us from the fascists and Nazi menace. Let's hear at least let's at least hear Goldwater's proposals. Which we're not, because the campaign's done, but ah, good. Oh, let Eagles fly. As part of his goodwill tour of the most prominent military installations around London, Defense Minister Enoch Powell visited RAF North Holt. Even though he would prefer being spared the humiliation, once one of the largest airships in all of England, from which the BE-2 left to bomb German positions in 1914, it was now a perfect representation of the state of the Royal Air Force. Baron! The base was eerily empty, with only a skeleton maintenance crew to keep the landing ship free of grass. The scant few airplanes in service of the Collaborator Air Force had mostly been shot down by partisan AA batteries or fled the country with their German pilots now. Almost nothing remained, save the spirit of the English free, first English aviators. Powell visited the empty hangars, the majority of which were entirely abandoned. The head of the maintenance crew, the highest officer left in the base, is visibly distraught by what he has been forced to show the minister, but... Pal, uh, can't blame him for what is the fault of two decades of corruption and decadence. When the visit ends, there are no inspirational speeches or photo opportunities, only an embarrassed handshake between the two, and the promise on the minister's part that things are going to change for the better this time. An eagle can't fly without feathers, and well, our men are better. Um, I think I've read this one before, so if you want to read this one again, please go right ahead. Fundamental to the defense of our country. No longer necessary for our protection. Actually, I've not read this one before, so. After a week, another question time. This time, the issue was particularly felt by the common public. As it was raised to the matter of conscription during the Civil War, the provisional government of the resistance had enacted a draft of the most able-bodied men to overwhelm the collaborationists and their German allies. In the weeks immediately following the final victory, the fear of German retaliation was enough to justify the extension of the emergency measure. But now the situation is stabilizing, more and more voices are calling for its repeal. When the question was finally raised about the corrupt conscription, Prime Minister Jellicoe knew he couldn't postpone the matter any longer. After a brief con consultation with Minister Powell, he took to the small podium and started talking. I thank the Honorable Lady for a question. The government has examined the matter of the extensive draft with the utmost attention, carefully balancing advantages and disadvantages of our decision. It goes without saying that the first implementation of the measure was acquired by exceptional circumstances we found ourselves in. The men and women who have given, given their lives to the liberation of England will forever be remembered. Applause spontaneously grows through the entire parliament, then silence return. Now, however, we are no longer to live in such times of emergency. The question is simple. Do we still need such a large, permanently mobilized force? This matter has been the subject of several meetings of the general staff, and I believe we are ready to share the recommendations. Jellicoe took a small breath, waited for a few seconds, and then delivered the final part of his speech. The government firmly believes that the conscription is fundamental to the defense of our country. No longer necessary for protection. Meeting with Sterling? Cool. Just listen to the professionals. Lieutenant Colonel David Sterling entered the Prime Minister's office without much fanfare despite having been one to insist on the meeting. After a brief salute, he immediately got to the point. Prime Minister, it has come to my attention that the issue of the Royal Army is finally being addressed by the government. Is that true? Indeed it is, Lieutenant Colonel, came Jellicoe's cautious reply. Then allow me to propose something. After a silent nod from Jellicoe, he went on. Some of my peers believe that our defeat was not due to having enough men. These peers are morons. We lost because we had so many soldiers we didn't know where they, where they were and how to direct them. What I propose is a radical reform, one that will make the Royal Army a professional fighting force. We do realize that waving radical reforms in front of the general staff is the same thing as waving a red drape in front of a bull, don't you? The Prime Minister added with a worried grin. <clears throat> I won't deny the obvious, but I need to say something even more obvious. If we build our, or rebuild our army as it was before, it'll be just as effective as it was before. We will meet the same end as we did before. What we need is a smaller force, unhindered by logistics and armed and trained in such a way that they can overcome any resistance at a point we choose. The officer went on to explain his proposal, pointing out the necessary changes and focal points of the new doctrine after he thought or after he left. Jellicoe couldn't help but feel intrigued by such a radical thought, but still, doubts lingered. Could he risk everything over a single officer in his dream? Perhaps some more reflection was needed, after all. War is a complicated business. Edge of the sword. Front of the shield. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I don't want to make it. An elite force. I kind of like the elite force. Those to increase uh, professional army. I kind of like that one more, so if you want to read about the sh front of the shield, please go right ahead. As well as invasion from... Uh, lessons from the invasion. As well as a defensive force. I don't remember which way we went before, but I think we're just going to go with the edges. Oh, we can't do this one anyways. Oh, 
Yeah, so. The edge of the sword. In the end, Sterling is right. Rebuilding her armies is to be like what it was during the last war would be recreating all the conditions that brought to our defeat. Sterling's reforms are exactly what we need to show the world that we can return to the forefront of innovation and even in military matters. Our new army will be much smaller than before and centered around small, well-equipped, highly trained and autonomous units, tailored to a single task. These small units will move fast and strike hard, destroying our enemies before they even have the chance to react. In theory, this should allow our army to deal crippling blows to the foe. In practice, we'll simply have to wait and see how it goes. Nice. Lessons from the SAS. A special AO service was Sterling's own creation during the Lost War. Despite her defeat, they nonetheless proved themselves to be an extremely effective strike force. In several successful operations, they inflicted heavy losses upon enemy at a fraction of the cost in human lives and equipment. Our new army will apply the lessons of the SAS. Speed, surprise, organization, and powerful offensives. At a general level, effectively transforming the entire Royal Army into teams of commandos, will strike at the enemy from a hundred different points and destroy them before they can even hear the sound of their death. Nice. An elite force. It took us months to fully reshape the Royal Army according to Sterling's vision, but it is finally done. Our new land army is an extremely professional and effective force, thanks to the complete reintegration between the various branches of the Royal Armed Forces. Our troops will strike with a strength of a hundred men each, moving at lightning speed and destroying their target with precision. Of course, we'll have to be careful. As all small tools, this new army is delicate and require extreme coordination and competence in order to be able to operate at full efficiency. We're confident that our officers are up to the task. Nice. Awesome, 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 awesome. Squad best schooling tool. Should have got that before I went to War with Scotland, but let's see. Listen to the experts. Or like father, like son. Loyalty, restore naval titles and medals. Need for battleships. Steal from America. For you, father. HMS Jellico, a functioning navy. Um. Uh, I'll give me some time. Let's see. Jets of the future. American jet models. Efficiency does increase, which I do like. Fluid consumption goes down. Airfield consumption goes down further. Harris is right. Invest in bomber research. Request from Harris. Ooh, I like that one too. A British Air Force, a professional Air Force. Well, we joined the OFN. I think we'll go with the OFN. So if you worry about Harris's right, please go right ahead. Invest in bomber research and request some Harris as well. So, jets of the future. Jet airplanes are the future of the air combat. Far faster than any prop planes, they can climb higher than anything else in the sky. During the occupation, the Royal Air Force was barred from having anything resembling the newest German models, which means we'll have to start from the basics. We should immediately establish a research group to analyze jet engine designs and then teach our best engineers how to build and maintain them. It'll be difficult, but we'll need the help of our allies, and, but, however, there's much to gain. American jet models. With their lack knowledge on jet airplanes, we have no idea what kind of airframe would best suit such a powerful engine. With a looming risk of producing flying caskets for our own test pilots, we need to rely on our American allies once more to avoid unnecessary problems. But by buying some of the outdated designs and having a research team study them, we'll soon be able to fully understand the most important concepts of jet flight, and then apply it to our own domestically produced airplanes. Nice improve their engines. Now that we understand the basic functioning of a jet engine, and we already have a small jet force, we can slowly start improving our designs. Modern advancements in the field allow our technicians to tweak engines and airframes to allow for greater speed without greater losses or greater risks. Of course, we'll need help from our friends in the Alliance to fully understand the scope of our research, but we'll make sweeping advances in short time, allowing us to fill the gap between us and modern air combat. Better aerodynamics, develop better engines. Um, fuel is going to be a problem. I do want a British Air Force though. So, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead, as well as this one. I do want to go to a very British Air Force, so develop better engines. A general staff has reviewed Harris's proposal and found it extremely promising. He should receive all the funding he needs, as long as he also focuses his attention on new improved engines for bombers. With war assuming more and more transcontinental value, it is the utmost importance that a long-range aircraft are able to cross seas and oceans if necessary. Our enemies will fear us from Germania to Tokyo. Well, I only went this way just because I still want to be a little bit British, right? A British Air Force. While our air swell allies have offered help us rebuild our air force, we don't need their help. We battled German Stukas in the skies of London before the Americans even thought about helping us and will do it again if the need arises. We can't expect others to save us, and for this reason, we can ultimately count on only ourselves. The Royal Air Force will be a shining example of British ingenuity and combat skill if we fail. It'll be our own fault, but if we succeed, it'll be our triumph and ours alone. Actually, it feels, I think we should, I should have went down this route and said then. It doesn't make too much sense, though. Why would we get a choice to go between these two? Which makes some sense that you would need options, but still. Still. But. I mean, it makes sense to go down this way. A need for battleships. I want to go down this way a lot. A time for remembering. And it makes sense we should go down this way. Oh, but it takes time to do that one. So we're going to go listen to the experts. <laughs> Just because it seems like this would be the obvious way we want to go. But the old Royal Navy was sent around battleships. This proved to be a disaster against the Japanese and German fleets. The former launched hundreds of strikes with the large carriers, sinking most of her ships without even firing a shot at their own dreadnoughts, while the latter relied on subs to cripple our economy. 
It is evident that the age of the battleship is over. Our American allies are ready to provide us with the best experts in naval aviation and help us in developing new naval tactics centered on carriers. It will take some time to adapt, and as of most of our naval staff has never commanded anything resembling a modern fleet, but the results will be worth the effort. Also, if you want to read about these, please go ahead. So, you know, naval titles and medals. I need for battleships, of course. Steal from America. And then, for you, Father. And then, unveil HMS Jellicoe. Because that's going to take more time, but... Carrier development. The American experts have arrived, and with them are dozens of naval engineers with great experience in designing ships. While we rebuild our naval industry, we can set up our own joint naval design board so that our own shipbuilders can learn from their expertise when they're necessary and ready. We'll be able to develop our own carrier designs. Forever renouncing the mighty battleships will be a hit to our national pride, but we already lost a war due to pride, and we won't lose another one for the same bloody reason. New carrier planes. While our carrier designs are ready, and the first hole is laid in the dockyards or dry docks, we'll need a suitable complement of specialized aircraft to take off from these floating airfields. Carrier planes follow different rules compared to their land-based equivalents, and our designers must take all differences into account to ensure peak efficiency and battle performance. To this end, we shall form a designing board tasked with this very specific assignment. While we are in no hurry, as the first carriers won't be ready for the, at least for two years, it would be wise to begin this project, project immediately, so that we may fill the technological gaps separating England from other naval powers that already have extensive experience in operating carriers and carrier centered task forces. Investing in subs. One of our greatest mistakes in the last war was underestimating the power of the submarines. By the end of the conflict, thousands of convoys populated the abyss. No matter how many subs we sunk, more would take their place. While the many old admirals condemned such a dishonorable way of fighting, we can no longer deny its efficacy. To this end, we shall study sub designs and devise their own underwater menace. Silent and deadly, this new addition to the Royal Navy will relentlessly stalk our foes until they lie in the cold embrace of the seas and American subs. Our American friends have a large and modern sub force. Rather than wasting months, if not years, we could save ourselves the trouble of buying their designs. This will strengthen our mutual friendship, but will come at a hefty cost. The American Navy won't give up their most advanced weapons for pennies. On the other hand, we can invest that money into newer dockyard facilities, increasing our shipbuilding capacity. It will take time to get up to par, but our, and our first subs will surely be inferior to the counterparts in other uh, parts of the world, but sometimes number is a force in itself. For the first time, the Royal Navy has undertaken a serious effort to build a large and modern uh, sub-fleet. Traditionally German Dominion, or Domain, reviled by traditionalist British admirals, it can no longer be ignored. Everyone remembers what happened 20 years ago. Thousands of convoys sunk, ud trade utterly disrupted, shortages of men and material, and the collapse of the war effort. Despite some grumbling, the English Navy is working together Together with the American delegation to learn more about subs and significant progress is already being made. In order to move forward, the Lord of the Admiralty is planning to hold a joint meeting with the Americans to discuss further cooperation. Our allies are happy to help and have asked that we should what we should focus on. On one hand, this was the would be happy, they would be happy to provide us with the latest designs of their subs, greatly speeding up the process of updating our underwater fleet. On the other hand, several American businessmen have expressed their interest in opening new shipbuilding facilities in preparation for a predicted expansion. We don't have the time or money to increase both production and integrate the latest designs, which we focus on. Latest designs, increased production is always best. Um, I like it, makes more sense for me to get or it makes more sense for us to go with this one just because we want the best subs out as fast as possible, but long term. Production is always good, but eventually, production will ramp down, hopefully someday, so it doesn't make too much sense, but we'll go with this one. A functioning navy. Finally, the bulk of our work is done. Will it take many more years, or even decades, before we can compare ourselves to the Great Royal Navy of our old? Our naval staff agrees that we have made a significant step in the right direction. Our fleet has been reformed following the most modern doctrines, and already dozens of new state-of-the-art ships protect our coast from foreign threats. We have come a long way, and the results are showing. Cool, and I think that's mostly going to be it for this campaign. Um, I do want to see if Shapiro's going to do anything else here. He might not. The Anheuser back they're all in Anheuser back still, including Iran, so that's interesting. I don't think anything else is going to happen. I could be very wrong about that, but actually, do they have what? What do they have here? The Gang of Four still here. Um, oil rationing. They have Euro a European fleet. Interesting. They have Von Trusco's hair. Let the summit commence. Um, if you want to read this, please go right ahead. Just nice to be here in Canada. Um, reform Luftwaffe. Oil crashes, of course. Light reforms. Very light reforms, apparently. Oh, my goodness. Oversized Wehrmacht. Oh. Netsram, uh, Rex Amps. Oh, they want to pursue a militaristic offend. We're going to have to act if we want to live in a different world. Cool. That's fine. Um, I'm just hoping... Is that it for Speer? That might be it. Uh, spending for Pobol. Redirect it. That's fine. I don't care at this point. Um, yeah. I guess maybe they're done already. Lead of the Zolv round, of course. They might be done already. So, that kind of sucks. But hey, even with passing the NHS, we still have an annual deficit. It's not great and mighty, but hey, it is what it is. And the Russian Free Territory is doing what? Plenty of manpower, quite a few divisions, probably not very good. But I think that's going to end us for here. It seems like everything's fairly peaceful here in, uh, well, Germany the Nine Heights back. So I guess it is what it is. But hey, if you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great, great rest of your day.